So, uh, welcome to the uh, September board meeting. So, we've got a pretty full house. Um, I'm not seeing Johnny or Jeffro, but I think I see everybody else. Oh, Thomas is here. I was going to say he said he might be late, yeah, but he's here. Yeah, I don't see Davida, but I thought that he was supposed to be uh, traveling he, today. Yeah, he's in Dublin also. He wasn't sure if he was going to make it or not. Yeah. I did see him briefly yesterday. So I hope that you're having uh, fun on the other side of the Atlantic. Oh, yes. Excellent. So we've got the uh, previous uh, minutes posted and uh, didn't see any feedback on those. So I think that they're probably in good shape. And uh, wanted to have some sort of follow-ups from our face-to-face uh, -face meeting in Boston. Uh, got sort of the high level items uh, on the list there is to improve our onboarding docs for new contributors. Um, documentation seems to be a thing that's coming up a lot. And so that's probably a good thing. Um, on the one hand, it means that our docs need work, but on the other hand, it seems that there is not a disagreement over whether or not the docs need some work, which is always nice. And uh, we've got some areas of either ambiguity or differing practices from our actual practices in the SIG and government's documents. And so that's something that we probably uh, want to find some time to isolate and take a look at. Uh, complicatedly near and dear to my heart is the vision statement, because I may have spent too much time talking to business people, and our lack of a uh, vision or mission statement makes certain decisions weird. And uh, down at FOSDA, we noticed that a bunch of projects have mascots, and CentOS doesn't have a mascot. We could have a mascot. Mascots are nice. And we have a new logo. And so those are some of the uh, high level things from our face to face meeting. So anybody want to sort of focus in on or work on some of those specifically? Yeah, I mainly listed what were our main takeaways. A lot of them added to our larger topics but I did want to list those out for everybody. Um, so, I mean, that's why those particular ones are listed. Um, some had action items from the meeting themselves. And this does kind of lead into the wiki discussion. If we want to go into that at this point. It's definitely being discussed on the dev list and we should keep that active um, and also work with the infra team to see what is even possible for us to use. Um, <laughs> it did seem like some version of Markdown was popular and somebody else I want to say it was like make the docs, but that isn't what it was called. Um, uh, there was a brief discussion on ASCII doc that I saw. ASCII in there. docs, yes. So that was <laughs> another option, but some people felt that was like too much. Yeah, so I, will confess, um, I love ASCII doc, and it has overhead. Um, yeah, ASCII doc is what you know will be used for any of the the docs that would come um, from RHEL. Um, but I don't think that means that entire websites have to be built with it. Um, okay. So I honestly, I would go with least least overhead for changing things. Um, but I, I, uh, I, we, I can take this all to mailing list stuff. I think one of the important things though is to be able to, um, <clears throat> it, it's nice to be able to do things very simply. And for most websites, like your structure is pretty simple and you don't need a lot of, semantic, you know, information or whatever, except uh, there's a lot of places where you, you really want to have uh, more design oriented stuff. Um, you, you know, not just text, but like, uh, I think cards is the word for the design element, right? That you, and 
I was thinking to yes, stuff. That's, I know where you're going. Yeah. So, um, and it's not like none of that stuff can be done with, with um, Markdown or whatever, but it's just something to be, I don't know, thinking about. Maybe we just need like a web hack fest or something to just can do who, all of this. Who, um, who's maintaining the website stuff right now? Uh-huh. Cause like I asked the question cause I actually filed a, uh, an issue and then a, a PR to change the legal wording. Like we discussed, as far as I know, it sat there unattended since I did it like several weeks ago. Sean, didn't you say you I had can merge it thing through and it didn't can, build? Yeah. Like I've pushed some of the, the most recent changes, uh, but I, you know, I've pushed changes for like some of the calendar updates and stuff. Um, I'm not able to build locally. I can't get, um, I can't get the tools working to build locally, which is, I think, a real problem. Um, so uh, I've occasionally pushed stuff and uh, managed not to burn everything down in the process. But do you have permission okay, to just merge your own PR, Josh? I don't. I don't know. I like. I didn't think that was a norm, so I didn't try. I'll go back and, and yeah. look. Um, but the reason I asked the question is because if we're talking about moving away from a wiki or switching to some other tool, I think part of that conversation needs to be what is the norm? Who reviews things? How does that get merged? Like, what is the, I don't want to say um, SLA, but like, what is the expectation for somebody actually submitting something and getting attention on it? Because right. right now there doesn't seem to be one. And I understand people are busy, but uh, the wiki is easy to change. Right. And if yes. we're going to move to something that's harder, we need to figure that out. Yeah, yeah ideally I mean, something where like the change process is is markdown files and get get GitLab, whatever, and make merge requests uh, and you know continuous delivery so that when your thing is merged, it's there almost immediately. And you know, many people set these things up where you've got uh, CI things where even your your merge request gets like a test build and you can actually see it. Like that's really cool to be able to do that. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's being able to build locally easily would be very nice. And if it's just like a, like a container that has all the tools packaged into it, we'll just like use this container. That'd be so helpful. I mean, the RDO website, mind you, it's hosted in our Git and Garrett. Um, but yeah, we merge things and Zool processes it and boom, it's on our website. So it's definitely not impossible. Um, even RDO's website is so outdated, it needs a revamp of what it looks like and stuff. But um, maybe I can talk to Duck and see if he has any ideas about the CICD part that, and if we could do it something similar through a GitLab. Yeah, I'd love to see it, yeah. some kind of automation around it in part because uh, as Josh mentioned, we don't really want Red Hat to be paying someone full time just to be watching documentation merge requests. Like that's that's not a job that anyone's going to actually have. And no, so, and it doesn't make sense because it should be as soon as someone says, yep, this is good. You know, it goes through the process and it's up there. Yeah. So oddly enough, we're having a technology yeah. uh, issue more than anything else. <clears throat> and I, I mean, I would say I've set up um, these kinds of things um, using Git, GitLab uh, actions. They have like a really good actions deployment system in GitLab. It's, it's exceptional. Um, and so we could set that up. I, you know, the question is, what's the underlying tool that's doing the building? Um, and I guess uh, I would like to just have a set of requirements. Um, but beyond that, like I don't. I've been bogged down in so many um, uh, site building tool flame wars. I, I just um, meet the requirements and let's move on. Sean, where are we hosted? That might determine some stuff. Um, right now, maybe in, maybe by CPE, maybe in community cage. I'm not actually sure where. It might be different for the different uh, sites that we have too. I'm, I'm, I could check. I'm sorry. I just don't know off the top of my head. Yeah. And if uh, it is multiple sites, can we get it to one place? Because that'll also help if we automate things. Yeah. 
I would just like, we have our, we have our main centos.org, we have wiki.centos.org, and we have sigs.centos.org, and they are three different tool sets with different contribution processes. And if we could get that to one, if we get it to two, that's a win. If we can get it to one, that's a super win. So, we and I think the big people seem to be very happy with the process for the so, SIG site. So maybe we should consolidate towards that. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, the SIG one feels like it's been pretty well battle tested at this point by various people, and it's made some good inroads. Um, I know the hyperscale SIG's been publishing doc with it, the KMOD SIG's been publishing doc with it, the automotive SIG's been publishing doc with it. And so that feels like if we were to head in a direction, that would be the one I would lean towards. But I'm also not supporting the software, so I don't like to pick it. Well, I'm not yeah, major, find so. out where and who's supporting it. Um, if we have a process that's working and if it's automated, then maybe we just need to port the main site, make sure that when we build, we can have the pretty, pretty site that we should have for a project, an overhead project and then have everything just built inside whatever framework we have. So I think we may actually be closer than we think we are and just have some research. Yeah, I'd like to talk, like uh, Brian, are you on the team that's supporting the current SIG stuff? As uh, I would love to hear from the people who are actually doing the support for that if it is like not painful for them. As if on the support side of it, it's actually proving to be super tons of work on their end. Maybe they have a mythical fourth option. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think this, um, it, it, it doesn't take a ton in terms of day-to-day uh, -day support. I think, you know, just having the, uh, the process support is probably going to be something that we want to design more. Uh, so less trouble on the technical side. Uh, more on the, the the process level support for that sort of stuff. Okay. I, I love what I've been seeing coming out of the SIG docs, and I've consumed a lot of them, and they've been great. And if that's working well, that's a win. If it's working for both the support and for the uh, actual SIGs themselves. But we don't want to forget our support engineers who actually are on pager. Um, we love them and we depend on them. Yeah, I mean, we definitely don't want to overload the system so that it's bogging down the machines and they're getting like CPU alerts and memory alerts and. Yeah, yeah. and we don't want it to be something that's so complicated that only one or two of their engineers can support it. And if they go on vacation, that would be sad. Like, yeah. No, so this, yeah, it's, it's very simple. Uh, the, the technology behind it is very simple on the, uh, on that end, I, I think we literally support it off of one machine, and we could, you know, do all, all kinds of fancy caching, all that stuff, but we don't need to. So, um, yeah, I think the, the technical side is 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 really simple. Okay. And yeah, I would love to see moving in that direction for the rest of the sites. But, uh, that is definitely, as Sean mentioned, something that we want to make sure we keep on the DBL list where our wider community can chime in on what their thoughts and feelings are. Yeah, I think if we can come up with some options based on research that Sean's going to do and Brian's going to ask and to make sure that we're not overloading anybody. And we say, based on the conversations on the wiki, what do y'all think about this? We'd have to do some prep work to make sure it's visually able to do what we need to do. Or, or this is another option, but this is what's been working. If everyone's happy with it, we can go in this direction. That sounds wonderful to me. Okay. So let's get the research back and then we'll put something together to send to the lists. Because I don't think we have quite enough information to say, hey, this is what we're thinking. Uh, any other thoughts on uh, 
back on SIG governance and doc cleanup for uh, mascot stuff. I'm going to punt vision to our ticket that we got way down there. Because I know at one point, uh, Johnny had uh, suggested possibly a quokka because they're adorable and they run around smiling all the time. But uh, Johnny is not uh, here with us now. But, uh, just looking around at the various mascots that people had at the things, like people like mascots. I like mascots. Should we pull in the marketing team? Because they would have to create a avatar and other things like that. Maybe they have some ideas. Or maybe they want to be involved. I... Yeah, that makes sense to me. Um... Yeah, and then we can get the ideas from them of what they're thinking, some things we're coming up with, put it out to the community, see if they have any ideas. Then we'll have a vote. Hopefully, whatever we choose will pass legal. <laughs> We choose a cute animal that's offensive to somebody. Yeah. So what were we thinking? Oh, like we came up with, because we were trying to keep Japanese related with the dojo. Well, there's Red Panda software. So Red Panda came off the list. Something else we thought was, <laughs> oh, that's possible. Oh, wait, there's software with that. That's off the list. So we have to make sure we we're not what? on anyone's trademark with our cute animal. Yeah, should, should there we was also the, to the next board meeting? The marketing team? Yeah. That'd be great. Okay. I don't know who to talk to to make that happen. I think it's, is it Elaine? Um, yeah, I mean, we have our artwork SIG, which is basically Elaine. So, and then there's the promo SIG, which is me. So, okay. Um, and Mikey, we're trying to talk. Yes, oh, yeah. sorry. Um, there was also the notion of having a uh, an indeterminate animal as a mascot. I, I think the 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 gimp mascot came up as an example. Um, that's protective because you know um, it's not a specific animal that somebody can claim infringes on their on their brand. Yeah, that's where Celeste's suggestion of getting someone from marketing artistic would definitely come in. Unless we wanted to take a bunch of different animals ourselves and go, hey, what about this? <laughs> I mean, we, we could theoretically stitch them together in a gimp and make a cento, um, which, as I have discovered, is in a, a type of Italian poetry composed of the poets of other poets. Um, we could just uh, throw some words at one of these um, these AI uh, graphics things. What you don't know what kind of nightmare is going to come out of that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> its value system is not ours. <laughs> yeah. And uh, on the uh, logo front, we got a request from uh, One and One about logo use on their platform and I uh, think we asked them if our existing like trademark guidelines were okay and uh, I can't like I'm gonna try it uh, Ying Yaron you got a hand go for it I am um, so um, I have heard uh, heard that you uh, you want uh, artistic uh, artistic guys or artists uh, to, to make your mascots. And uh, despite the fact that uh, I know we really already have a, a central as art SIG, um, I think um, it would be my honor if, if, if you let me to have a time. Yeah, I'm, I'm always excited for community contributions. Uh, there, there is basically never a time I'm going to turn that down. Okay. So I, I, I'm, I, I, I will welcome people to just come up with whatever ideas, and the board can go on it. I did have a presentation. I, well, I, I had, at the face to face, I had presented some like things that uh, Amy and I had brainstormed. 
Um, and, but yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, and also more importantly, uh, we are here to apply for the official status of our SIC. Yes. Yeah, we already made the, I'm <clears throat> sorry. You're a little farther down on the agenda, so it is on there. We just met uh, Amy uh, early in tonight, and uh, um, we have already made the proposal here, and we want to apply for the Center OS China SIG. We um, talked to some of the members here, and um, I think that is the uh, official steps for to, to announce this thing here to let others know what, what is our proposal. So, so basically, our SIG is uh, want more people hey, Betty, in Betty. Right. We have an agenda. You are on the agenda. Oh, right. Let, let Pat get back to the agenda and we will get to your item. Oh, okay. We should oh, share okay. sorry. sorry, we are sorry. That's okay. That's fine. It's yeah, you're uh, I think four items down. Right. The link so is got... in the chat if you want to follow along. And so uh, we've got the logo request from uh, one and one that was uh, asking what they can do. And they didn't like, I think we sent them the trademark and usage guidelines from the website. I don't think we've heard much back past there. Uh, does anyone else remember anything that I have forgotten on that? Sean, you were going to contact is this them? a new one? Oh, is this the same one as that one? Yeah. Yeah. One and one. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, I will take care of that. Yeah, our yeah. Our guidelines are are not great for their use case. And we need to look at revamping them and maybe um I don't know if that's a whole board activity or if it's maybe just like I make a proposal or something. Yeah, out. and that's so, where we were getting the idea of the powered by, which would mean more logos and stuff. Something. Yeah, I really want to avoid uh because the, the, I think they had proposed something along the lines of saying the center is partner, and I want to be very hesitant about what the word partner. So, right. Um, yeah. Legal probably has a definition for partner. Yeah. Yeah. As I'd love to have like just a proposal that's gone through legal that is signed off on that we can either vote up or down because. Anything that we vote on is going to have to go through legal. So if we put them in the front of it, then theoretically we do less circling. Because they know things about trademarks that I will never know. So on to our open issues. Uh, I think we can close out the Clarify Centos Errata policy. As, uh, Davida got the uh, blog post published, I want to say, eight days ago. Yeah, and if Alexandra does add a thing about testing, we'll just get that added in. Yeah. Yeah. So and we'll it's already that. been a successful blog post because I have sent it to several dozen people internally here, and they read it, and they said it was good. So I know that it, like, it is already serving its purpose. And so then uh, next up on our list is uh, the ticket that uh, Josh alluded to there on clarifying the legal aspects of our governance docs, which... Uh... Yeah, I mean, it, it was a simple PR, uh, just waiting to see if it was worded appropriately and get review, so... So I think that that one is effectively moving. Um, and we've got uh, number 85, which is a uh, vision and passively mission statement because I have spent too much time with business people, but also at the same time, these things are really helpful to try and clarify and describe what it is that we think we're doing as a CentOS project. And that helps make it really easy to say, yes, this is in scope. No, this is not in scope. Uh, particularly with a lot of the brand confusion that we're getting now with the change from CentOS Linux to CentOS Stream. Having a thing that we can point at that says, this is what we think we are in a fairly short format would be helpful. Um, it is something that I would definitely like to have 
broader community input on, but also if you just post a list, call for vision statements, you're gonna get 35 different statements that are impossible to harmonize. And so having a thing to start with and then edit aggressively, and if the edits remove literally every word that I wrote, that's fine. But get people working on the same text towards the same goal. And so that's a ticket that I got opened up on that. There's a draft posted in there. I'm calling it draft one alpha as a strong indicator that this is very, very editable. Um, I, I have a humanities background. You can rip all of my words out and replace them. I don't care. I'm used to this. And so if there's any thoughts on that, And so that brings us to uh, the proposal for the China SIG. Hi, Betty and everyone. <coughs> so, ticket <laughs> so ticket number 86. Um, it yes. looked like it got filed just a little while ago, if you haven't had a chance to review it. Yeah, because uh, we used to have our proposal as the form of slides, mm -hmm. but it seems this is the correct form. And if you'd like to look at the PowerPoint, we'll, 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 we're happy to present you. But I don't look at it here. But if you want to look at some PowerPoint, we can send it here. And you can have a look of it, or if there are any questions. And so, uh, like I read it earlier, uh, when you submitted it, it looks good to me. Um, as the, uh, the, the Chinese community is a valuable part of our entire worldwide open source system, and I don't speak or read Mandarin. So um, having folks that are able to do that and contribute is super handy in my book. Um, but I've, I've been talking for like 10 minutes straight, so I'm going to open the floor to someone else. And I will start calling on people. Matt. We are waiting to be examined. <laughs> what do you foresee that you want to do with this? I don't know a whole lot about this because it's the first time I'm hearing about this, but what do you want to, what's your goal? Um, okay, okay. Uh, basically for now we are mainly for a media group because um, <laughs> maybe we, we are lack of people. Uh, maybe in the, uh, you are not really know that inside of China, most of people think the center is dead. Really, <laughs> there's lots of missing misinformation and disinformation about central S uh, in China, and we uh, we need to address with that first. Yeah, and firstly, just just like that, people inside China knows the central S community is still running and they are still supporting for the central S. They can uh, continue to use central S and uh, upgrading their central S like that. And we mainly focus on to translate the uh, uh, news and the uh, community uh, meeting like the central S dojo uh, happened before. And uh, well, what is more, we want, want to let more people inside uh, like the students or the young people like us to know what is the open source community and also help them to uh, Start to contributing the central S and uh, because uh, the way to help the new people contribute for the uh, project is not so clear. <laughs> we want to improve communication between uh, our domestic community and international one uh, because uh, the current communication schedule isn't very good. And also, uh, we'd like to promote um, the uh, central as as well as well as the open source ideology itself, um, because China doesn't have a strong open source tradition. That is our two main goals. Yeah, we sounds good to me. We're currently working on a website called Billy Billy. That is the Chinese uh, edition for the YouTube. Because... Uh, it is the Chinese equivalent yeah. for YouTube. <laughs> it, it is a video 
platform because we cannot access YouTube very easily. Yeah, we cannot access YouTube in the uh, easily in the China. So we want to do some media work to do some video to uh, promote the CentOS and open source to the uh, Chinese people and also invite new people to have a try of the open source uh, project. Yeah, have a try to contribute or to consume the open source project. Uh, so, so that they know more about open source, about this community, and uh, about uh, its completely different structure and uh, how it works. Uh, but um, like in comparison to uh, companies and those business uh, industrial ones. And I think we can make the, our community, like CentOS community, more uh, transparent. Parent, yeah, yeah. they are more open to the other guys that let them know what is exactly happening in inside the central S. Um, um, so they will guess that okay, central S is bad. Um, okay, so what 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 we need is not more transparency. I I believe this community is currently quite transparent, but the problem is, um, the information that we provide, um. Uh, isn't easily accessible by, uh, you, you know, commu community members or uh, other guys or whoever they are who wants to who wants to watch uh, how this community does. Um, so uh, we'd like to improve communication. That is one of our, one of our main goals. Uh, like the meeting, I know you will uh, upload a recording from the YouTube, but inside China, they cannot uh, easily access the YouTube. So we will also uh, just re-upload it to the Billy Billy to let the Chinese people look at uh, how is our central ad um, meeting going on. Yeah. I suppose that means you're also looking at doing things like Chinese subtitles and things of that nature for, for video recordings. Yes, but not okay. for... All of the video we cannot afford this. <laughs> well, sure, but uh, uh, our group basically currently have probably five or six people. Uh, yeah, and yeah, that'd be a lot to do. <laughs> yeah, we have we we just found I think less than two months, but we currently have I think two hundred and fifty six <laughs> subscriptions. Yeah, that's a lot of transcribing. Yeah, no, uh, but otherwise that it sounds pretty good to me. Thank you. Thank you. What is this downstream distro? Oh, that is. Um, okay, so uh, that is the brand vision. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, Linux distro based on Central S, uh, well, which is to like uh, encourage contribution within the uh, within China, uh, especially mainland China, because uh, many of our uh, developers cannot use. Uh, English uh, cannot use English very fluently. So, so the idea is basically, um, well, we create a distro and encourage their contribution, and probably we could contribute uh, contribute back to the main project through that th through that channel. Uh, I don't know if that is possible, but yeah. But isn't part of the translation work so that they can contribute to the project itself? Yes. Uh, so it won't be happen so soon. I will give the prototype of this distribution because it's basically my graduate part. So basically we uh, well, we, we need a Chinese version of the um, we need Chinese version of the documentations. Uh, we need the inver uh, the, initial, the initial thing, the initial uh, you, you know the, the distro. Yeah. And we need uh, a, a, basically quite a lot of people uh, in comparison to uh, our current size. Uh, to run this community, so this won't be happen any any time soon. Yeah. But we want to do this. Uh, but we want to do this because yeah, it maybe happen after one year. Or so, but we also want to do it, and we want to make it happen. Yeah, yeah. just a wish. <laughs> you you can That's ignore great. it right now. I have to say, I love your enthusiasm. <laughs> I think that's probably the, that's the most important ingredient for uh, for any special interest group or uh, or in, in, external community. So I see. I think it's a really good idea. Translate to you love our uh, naiveness. <laughs> There's definitely nothing wrong with that. So I. I think we probably have what we need to vote on this. Um, are 
be uh, I, I would actually prefer it it's nothing against the enthusiasm and I appreciate it and I've had the privilege of talking to the folks behind the the Chinese SIG proposal before uh when I was doing some press work with the folks in 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 Greater China um but I would actually prefer if we could delay vote on this briefly I need to review the document that was submitted 33 minutes ago and I really haven't had time with no disrespect it's 10:30 at night where i am and i was with my daughter when you all submitted this so uh, i really do appreciate it and i'm not deliberately trying to slow your slow your roll but i need space on this okay uh, i agree yeah. adding a thing is it's not a snap ju- it's not a snap judgment yeah i agree as well i didn't have time to read the full thing and the downstream distribution bits are a bit different of what we discuss in the past so uh we definitely for me i need a bit more time to to reread the proposal and maybe we need to adjust it a bit i don't know well, uh, basically i think you can ignore for the distribution right now because it will not happen inside one year <laughs> probably inside more than one year yeah i will have it for my own not for the i'm not for the part of the community so that's not uh our Uh, working, yeah, not uh, inside our uh, working. Uh, it's not going to happen in any foreseeable future. We, okay. we have to say, yeah, yeah. Oh, I think we've got uh, based on what we're doing here, we've got some stuff we want to double check and read through. And so we will uh, thank you for the submission. We will definitely read it through it carefully and uh, come back to vote uh, either on the mailing list or uh, at the next board meeting, depending on how timing stuff works out. And any questions will be added to the issues, and you can answer them there. So that's why we put it in the issue, so everything can be tracked in the whole entire conversation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you. So moving on to our uh, set of uh, ongoing issues. So we've got uh, trusting uh, SIGs by default with secure boot keys. Uh, last I knew, the uh, hardware token was in the mail. Uh, how's it going, Brian? Uh, yeah, we're working on generating the, the roots of trust. There's one, uh, there's one item I met with the Bullard, uh, team from Red Hat last week, and they had a couple of questions about some things coming up related to K-Mods. Uh, they were going to do some research about, uh, how we actually track those on an ongoing basis in case we have to revoke them. That's a, uh, you know, one open question that we're looking at just from a technical basis, but this is, uh, still moving. And then we've got a ticket on recording historical SIG membership, which I believe is sitting on uh, infra because it requires uh, work from them that they have not totally scoped out. But I think we gave at least a framework of requirement things. Does that sound right? Uh, I think so. Um, I think we may have there might have been a couple of questions that we might want to sit down on about that. I'm remembering a, a conversation from earlier this week. Um, so let me go back to notes and I might, uh, Pat, I might ping you and uh, we can, we can chat about those. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, you've got almost all of my contact information and if you need more, I can get it. Yeah. And, uh, Then we've got uh, number 82, uh, clarifications and open questions concerning the possibility of SIGs creating rel content. So I had an action uh, item yes. from, the last, from the last meeting uh, to uh, put together at least a framework for a thing to discuss about. And I generated a 600 word wall of text, but it's at least in theory very precise. Um, it tries to be clear and direct whether or not it is useful is a very different question. Um, but it was based on the conversations we had with uh, Josh and Johnny and Mike, and I think somebody else each had things that they wanted to see in there, and I think I got the edges of all of that in. And so, um, haven't seen any sort of follow-up to it. So I'm assuming that because it's 600 words, no one had the time to read it. Um, but yeah, I would definitely like to see uh, some thoughts on this one. I was able to go to the uh, Apple steering committee meeting and actually talk to the Apple folks directly about what their build requirements are. 
and they're supposed to be publishing a doc uh, soon-ish that explicitly states they expect the Apple build roots to be retired at the day-ish of end of life for REL. And so we were looking at giving it uh, about like a 30-day buffer is what I put down to try and allow folks to capstone any projects like something complicated with OpenStack or kernel modules or other things that may be running for a while even though they're unsupported. And so I've tried to write something that is clear and specific, but it's wordy. Um, it's really wordy. I am sorry for that, but I wanted to address all of the angles I can possibly think of so that it at least has a focused page on it. So that is something that I'm hopeful uh, we can get some more feedback on. As always, I'm not terribly sensitive about my writing. So if you need to rip it and replace it, I don't particularly care. Um, so hopefully we can get some more thoughts on that so that we can have uh, at least something to potentially vote on for what we feel are reasonable requirements or something we can forward to the SIGs to have them then give back to us saying whether or not they're okay with it, which would be towards my preference to have them actually say if they think that this makes sense. Because if all of our SIGs come back and say, no, we're cool with kill it day of, um, then we're overworking and we can shape our processes to meet their actual expectations. And Pat, we're talking number 82, right? Uh, yes, number 82. Okay. I will put it on my reading list. Eh, might have had a month ago. How did I miss it? Uh, you probably saw that it was a wall of text and you put it on your I will read this later button. Because <laughs> I think uh, LibreOffice said it was 612 words. <laughs> um, but was, you, you gave me a writing assignment and you got words back. Um, God, it was a month ago we all met. You know, yeah, I tried to get that, I think, on the Friday after our Wednesday meeting. That could be why. Because I uh, usually have like this one hour gap on Fridays where I can do whatever I want. And I wanted to write a thing. And uh, so that brings us to our on hold issues uh, where we've got our traditional images into Azure comma WSL comma Microsoft Marketplace and the uh, it, AMIs and the Amazon CN regions. Uh, last I knew we were blocked on legal and I suspect that we are still blocked on legal. So uh, we can actually close number 27. Uh, David Duncan is gonna continue. Um, so no matter what scheme we work out for uh, issue number three, issue number 80 or any further action in the cloud providers, uh, David's going, um, uh, David has a set of images that he is publishing into the Amazon China regions. It's based on the stuff that we produce uh, out of the various composes and stuff. So he, he literally takes our, our images and then re-imports them. Uh, so uh, he's going to continue doing that for the, uh, for the China region specifically. Yeah, that is good news. Um, I know that uh, at our last meeting, uh, we had Jack here who's uh, I, on the Microsoft community team and mentioned that there was a new licensing structure that was coming out for that. Uh, do we know if someone has told legal that that was happening? Because yes, uh, yeah, oh. all, all the people who are aware, uh, we've got a, a like a whole group of, of legal folks that are looking at a number of, uh, of issues related to this. So they're all aware of the new, um, you know, any, any developments that might be happening coming up soon. Okay. Yeah, I just didn't want them to be spending all of their time working on obsolete docs and then for them to finally get to us and be like, oh, those aren't actually the licenses anymore. Because um, lawyer time is complicated. And so the, the less of it that we spin in circles, the happier everyone is. 
And so with that, I think we can pass off to our community architect. Hi, Sean. Hi, sorry, I had to find the right window to unmute. Um, <clears throat> all right, I'm gonna go out of order here. Um, the, well, the, so the videos are all available from the, uh, the DevConf Dojo, um, like cut up, and I even put bumper images at the beginning of them with my very limited graphical skills. Um, so, um, you know, you can share those individually. Um, I am keeping my eye on uh, FOSDEM as a potential place for a next uh, in-person dojo, which is, has always been something we've done in, in the past. Um, so I'm waiting I'm for- hearing, uh, a, I'm hearing positive unofficial things. That's good. So, you know, when we get an official thing, then we'll, we'll do an official thing. Uh, I, think, I, I think that one's like a pretty much set, like we do it, you know, so. Um, is there's a, an open question, I suppose, if, if we want to do a, anything else between now and then. Um, I mean, we just did something, what, in August, so September, October, November, December, January, and then I would suppose FOSM would be, you know, it's a bit of a gap. Uh, it's also a little bit tight to stick something, I don't know, you know, holidays and whatnot, so. It's official 11, year, 11 hours ago. What, Fosdem? Oh. February 4th oh. and 5th. Wow. Okay, well, let me amend my statement. I am now uh, planning a dojo in Brussels on February 3rd. So that's my uh, official community architect report. Link coming. Um, link. Okay. Cool. Incoming link. Incoming link. Uh, we'll probably use that Marriott right in the city center, which we've used before. Um, so I will contact even people inside right now. Um, so anyway, um, if we want a virtual one, maybe in November, late November timeframe, let me know. Um, or maybe right after the holidays, January, is that starting to push too close to pause them? I think that's I don't true. know. Oh, yeah. 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 My concern with January is that we will use all of our good presenters in January and then we won't have a positive agenda in February. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. So, what um, about if we did something maybe more, instead of presentations, more discussion y? If we really wanted to put something in November? I could do like something more discussion y or something more. Like an unconference, but yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'd be happy to uh, virtual into stuff. I'm on vacation for a bunch of November, but um, same. Mm. Depending on the timing, I may not have dialed in to send those events on vacation before, and I can probably do it again if my wife is kept happy and reminded that I am actually taking time off from work, and I'm not just working in my vacation. But Yeah. So depending on the timing, I would be happy to show up and talk I've, on things. If there's presentation topics you think I can research, I'd be happy to research them and present my research, but I don't have any great targets right now. All right. They are still being slightly wishy-washy. We are aiming for a physical conference. Um, but I think at the same time, if we don't start planning and putting that out there, we're going to no. yeah. kind of run into trouble of it being last minute, which Boston kind of felt like, not the actual running of it, but maybe people didn't have enough notice to get there. So giving as much heads up, I think is important. And we can always give a, a drop dead date like December 1st, if we hear that it's not going to be in person or, you know, the should FOSM change by, well, yeah, we have to give a drop dead date. If FOSM does not confirm or cancel by so-and-so and we hear rumors it might cancel, don't book, to basically so people can't, can hold off booking their flights as long as possible without the fear of losing them. Um, Three months. Everyone should grab their hotel rooms because those are easy to cancel. 
but um, I know people are going to wait on their flights as long as possible. Three months out would be the beginning of November. Yeah, end of October, beginning of November. Okay. Yeah, which is why I, that's usually for me where I start getting, you know, fancy on my travel. But. Okay. I'd probably aim for something towards the middle of October if, well, partially just because uh, there are so many holidays in November and December and then January. It's uh, effectively pretend like December doesn't exist is my <laughs> usual planning method. Um, Do we know anything about, for sure, about uh, DEF CONF in Brno? They, they were talking about moving into the summer, but I don't see anything official yet, because that tends to affect how I book things timing-wise for, for FOSDEM, if, if they're back-to-back -back again. I haven't heard any more updates. I can, I can ask. Oh, sure, Thomas. You can just grab a train. Unless they're in the middle of a storm like they currently are where the trains don't run. I don't see why I can't, you know, if they can put a train under the English Channel, why can't they put one under the Atlantic? <laughs> it's just a problem of scale, right? Yeah. Right. They're called airplanes and they go over the Atlantic. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should do a CentOS cruise at some point. I'll yeah, that, that used to be like a really huge thing with like, mm -hmm. like I know Pearl did the cruises back in the day. Maybe they still do. I don't know. Yeah, I know uh, Connie went on a couple of open source cruises some unit of time ago, but I uh, don't have firm information on those. Uh, any other input on the um, dojo or uh, I'll just mention um, well speaking of dates of when to do stuff places that I'm I will be I will be at the supercomputing conference in November uh, which Red Hat has a fairly corporate presence at but I'll be there you know um, as a centrist person so if anybody has any messaging that they think is relevant to that um, event um, you know let me know and uh, I'm going to do Ohio Linux Fest in December because um, it's a pretty short drive for me and I, I like the people. So um, I have a request to put uh, information about when Stream 8 goes end of life on the website. Um, I mean, I would like two years out from that, right? But I have a re request for that. So I, I guess I'll put that in. Um, uh, Sean? Uh, yeah. Do you mind, uh, maybe you and I can work together on that because I've got a couple of other uh, related things okay. that I want to put on a page on the website. So maybe okay. we can work I'll, together on that stuff. I'll CC you in on the, the thing I have then. So cool. Um, and speaking of events, I had sent an email to the, um, to, to the board list um, about my kind of draft proposal for um, uh, doing some of the event sponsorship, some of the budgeting and stuff actually in the in the open uh, within the promo sig, which right now the promo sig is not terribly active, but maybe giving the promo sig something to do, like you know managing a budget would actually like it's hard for a sig to be active if it doesn't have anything to do. So um, you know I don't I don't need to rehash that in this meeting and keep it a little late. So um, just read the email, or if you have questions here, I can answer them. That's it. Yeah, so I think that covers all of our stuff. Uh, we got any other business left? All right. Well, I wish all of you a good unit of local time and uh, take care and have fun. Thanks for running it, Matt, Pat. Oh yeah. So always happy to fill in where I can. Take care, all.